Well, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us on Crumpton News First at Four. I'm Tom Sherry. And I'm Whitney Ward. We begin with breaking news tonight. Former Spokane police officer Nathan Nash has been arrested in relation to a separate rape investigation. So Nash is already awaiting trial rape charges from 2019 that led to him getting fired from the Spokane Police Department. Our own Ian Smay is live in the studio now with more on Nash's arrest earlier today. Ian. Tom Whitney, the arrest stemmed from an investigation by the Spokane County Sheriff's Office Sexual Assault Unit. Nash is currently in the Spokane County Jail on charges of second degree rape and unlawful imprisonment. Now these charges are separate from the case that led to him being fired from the Spokane Police Department. This recent investigation started when the victim reported the alleged rape to the Spokane Police Department, who then passed the case to the Sheriff's Office. That's because the alleged rape happened when he was an officer with the Police Department. According to court documents, the victim told police she identifies as disabled and has a learning disability. This incident reportedly happened on July 6, 2019, which is actually earlier than the alleged assault that he was already awaiting trial for. According to the sheriff's office, Nash allegedly met the 40 year old female victim while responding to a call. The victim in this recent case reported that Nash responded to both the original call and follow up calls to document injuries, also saying that Nash sexually assaulted her. The victim also says Nash responded alone during the follow up visits. Through the investigation that started on July 20th, the sheriff's office says they had probable cause to arrest Nash on those charges of second degree rape and unlawful imprisonment. Now, if this sounds familiar, that's because the circumstances are very similar to the details of the case for which he is currently awaiting trial. That case stemmed from a sexual assault reported in October 2019. In that case, the victim alleged that Nash had assaulted them when he responded alone during a follow up. Nash was eventually charged with second and third degree rape and official misconduct in that case. He was also fired from the Spokane Police Department and, and, and until this morning was free after being released on his own recognizance after a November 2019 arraignment. Now, the Spokane Police Department has released a statement in light of Nash's arrest. It reads, quote, the Spokane Police Department is deeply troubled by a new accusation against Nathan Nash, a former SPD officer. The latest allegation was reported to SPD last month and SPD immediately referred the information to the Sheriff's Office for investigation. It continues, the Spokane Police Department takes these accusations of officer misconduct very seriously. In 2019, when the first allegation was made, Nash was promptly removed from patrol by a supervisor. He goes on to say, today, the department echoes Chief Meidel's statement from 2019. We would like to thank those who showed great courage by coming forward and bringing these allegations to light. Nash is likely to appear in court tomorrow and is being held without bail at the Spokane County Jail. Second degree rape is a class A felony in Washington, meaning Nash could face life in prison. We have been going through newly filed court documents that are giving more details on the case, and I'll have those details for you at five tonight. Tom, Whitney. All right, Ian, thank you very much. And in other breaking news at this hour, Washington seeing a big spike in COVID-19 cases as well as hospitalizations. Right now, state health officials are saying they're concerned because they believe the increase is linked to the Delta variant. And Spokane is starting to see a sharp spike in new COVID cases here as well. Crime 2's Amanda Rowley shares the latest on this. Amanda. Yeah, Tom and Whitney, the number of new cases reported by the Spokane Regional Health District today is 272. That brings the new total to more than 49,800 cases. Now, the health district also reported 30 new COVID hospitalizations from Monday, bringing the latest total to 85. Now, interim health officer Dr. Frank Velasquez says Spokane's hospitals are very busy right now, and that's not only because of the recent increase in COVID hospitalizations, but also because they are seeing a lot of high acuity pa patients at the same time. Now, according to the Spokane Regional Health District, 95% of local COVID hospitalizations are among people who are not vaccinated. And while the Delta variant is circulating throughout Spokane County, other strains of the virus are also spreading quickly in our region. Dr. Velasquez explained today, healthcare providers are seeing an increase in patients being admitted to the hospital who have COVID. That's also the case with patients admitted into the ICU who have COVID. So that's something that we're tracking very closely, but it's a number that changes every day because uh, patients get transferred between uh, services depending on the acuity that they have and um, patients get discharged to uh, other uh, care facilities. Now we have not been able to confirm the current capacity percentages at Spokane hospitals, but Providence Sacred Heart would only say it has room to treat people in the community who need care. However, Dr. Velasquez says in his conversations with providers, hospitals are starting to reach a total they should not exceed on a regular basis. 
Now, previously, when hospitals started to become overwhelmed with its COVID patient capacity, they paused or rescheduled elective surgeries. Now, at this time, Dr. Velasquez says Spokane hospitals are not discussing doing this again. Reporting in the newsroom, Amanda Rowley, CREM2 News. All right, Amanda, thank you very much. And by the way, the CDC right now says that Delta variant accounts for more than 93% of new cases that have been reported here just in the last two weeks of July. So to put that in perspective, at the end of May, the Delta variant caused only about 3% of new COVID cases. Well, switching gears, we are continuing to track our air quality here in the Inland Northwest. That's a live look downtown uh, at downtown Spokane. And today, thankfully, we have moved back into the moderate range, of course, which is very positive. That's great news. You know, we've been in the unhealthy and unhealthy for sensitive group categories for at least the past two days, kind of fluctuating between the two. Right now, officially, the AQI for Spokane is 89, which, you know, what a difference a day makes. Yeah, and when I last checked just last hour, we were at 100, so which better. brought Brought us down to the very high end mm -hmm. of the, uh, the of the moderate range, and now we've gotten even lower than that. Do you think we're going to keep getting better here? Well, I'm hoping so. Okay. Uh, we're going to find out more about that in just a little bit. We've got some weather that is now beginning to move into the area, maybe in the form of thunderstorms, but still, we've got that uh, a fire weather warning, a red flag warning in effect. Why? Well, tinder dry conditions, obviously, and now the uh, approaching thunderstorms later tonight and again tomorrow. That will be in effect through Thursday evening, and of course, that heat advisory can continues today that will expire late tonight. No activity being seen right now on the Doppler radar, but you saw those really begin to pop up yesterday late uh, last evening uh, down around the Palouse and in the Pullman area. Got some pretty strong thunderstorms. We'll look for an overnight low of 64 tomorrow. We'll see partly cloudy skies, 94 degrees. Again, a slight chance we could see thunderstorms begin to pop again on Thursday into Friday. For the weekend, I've got a slight chance of showers both days, but certainly cooler. We'll look for a daytime high of 82 on Saturday and 80 on Sunday. So I mentioned that thunderstorms are in the forecast and that may help further with improving our air quality. We'd like to go outside right now to meteorologist Thomas Patrick on when you can expect that improved air quality. Yeah, Tom, and we've already got, as you mentioned, some much better air quality today than we've seen the last three or four days here. Most areas reporting just moderate air quality at the moment and outside we can tell the difference as well. That sun is shining quite a bit brighter because it doesn't have to cut through nearly as thick of a layer of wildfire smoke, which was almost acting like overcast skies at times. Now our area in terms of air quality is very sensitive to two different weather patterns. We either get stagnant air, which really pushes down that smoke into the Columbia Basin particularly, or we get an unstable air. We're a bit closer to that end, which helps to uh, disperse and really mix and filter out some of that smoke into the upper layers of the atmosphere. And I think we're getting more of that weather pattern. But what's really going to make a big difference, especially for this weekend, is this full on air mass replacement. We're just going to get a new air mass and shove out all the old air mass, which is the one that we're experiencing right now that has quite a bit of wildfire smoke just mixed in, but thanks to uh, that not being stagnant, we're actually seeing some relief from this uh, wildfire smoke and thus our air quality has improved at least a little bit the last two days. Reporting in Spokane, I'm meteorologist Thomas Patrick back to you in the studio. Air mass replacement. We I like the sound that. of that. That don't sounds we? great. Yeah, it Get does. it going right yeah, now. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And by the way, for more information on our air quality, just text the word air to 509-448-2000. We'll send that link right to your phone. In the meantime, school looking a little different for students again as we get closer to fall. That Delta variant of COVID-19 continues to stunt reopening efforts across the country. When we return, we'll tell you more about the updated guidelines coming from the state.